Are you guys ready for some nightmare fuel today? Brain-eating fungus causes the immune system to attack its own neurons. Should you be afraid of this? No, but I'll tell you some stuff I'm afraid of. We'll talk about it. What these guys actually found was a new mechanism for fungi to trick the host's immune system and actually end up causing it to attack itself. And a squishy brain is a good meal for a fungi. Now this research was done in flies. This won't get us, but there are other fungi that can end up in our brain. If you've followed me for a while, you may know that Candida auris is one of my greatest fears. This thing is spreading across the world. It's had a heavy uptick since 2019. It mostly impacts people who are immunocompromised, but if you get it, it is very hard to get rid of. This is because fungi are very similar to us. They're also eukaryotes. We have many of the same systems, so unlike bacteria where we can attack things about them that we do not share, there's overlap. So antifungals have the potential to make you very ill. For many, if they have a fungal infection like valley fever that gets into their bones, they're going to have it for the rest of their life. It's going to be maintenance. It is part of you forever. What does freak me out about Candida auris is how similar it looks to something else. This is white nose bat syndrome. It's a fungal infection that attacks bats. Now, bats have a very strange immune system. They don't waste time just getting rid of pathogens. They suppress them. They have immunotolerance, so to say. Turns out that's not a great mechanism if you're trying to fight off a fungus because it will eat you. White nose bat syndrome is decimating bat populations worldwide and we can't seem to stop it. When it comes to Candida auris, ultimately it needs to be caught quickly before it ends up being septic. Fungus is not something you want in your bloodstream. You don't want anything in your bloodstream, but fungus is one of the things you really don't want. It digests you. They release tons of different toxins, which taxes your body and ultimately the fungus wins. And yes, it can and will end up in your brain. Our brains are pretty well isolated from the rest of our bodies. We are long-lived creatures and we have brains that have allowed us to survive. But there is the question, why are we seeing neurodegeneration? Things like Alzheimer's, I'm still in the camp that it's a plaque prion disease, but there is a growing body of evidence that it may be an immune system dysfunction. It may also be that there are multiple conditions that mimic each other and people have been misdiagnosed. Let's be real, is a fungi the cause for dementia in people? Probably not, at least most of the time. I mean, sometimes it is. What that study really demonstrated is that yes, these things are possible. Immune systems can attack your own brain and pathogens can be involved. I am personally in the camp that Alzheimer's is not an immune system condition. It's a prion plaque disease, but there's still a lot of question about that. It may be that plaques form incidentally over our lives, but if you eat somebody else's brain, that's how you get Kuru. Bottom line is, we don't know. So we spend time investigating it. Our immune systems can get a little bored sometimes and then just start attacking ourselves. Kind of like when you have ADHD and then the next thing you know, you just broke five things and you have no idea what happened and you don't know where your wrench is. That's just me. Nonetheless, as new information comes out, I will keep you guys informed. Not just the super scary stuff, but also the debates. I will also keep you updated on Candida auris and any other spooky pathogens making their way across the world.